All right, hi everyone. Where we left off, we just created our player with our camera fully working. So now we can walk around our scene and it's all good. But how can we further this concept? Well, let us create a weapon, I reckon. Our weapon would be lovely. So if we go to our player, let's create another empty object. And we're gonna call this our rifle holder pods. And this is going to be where our position of our rifle is. If you press F, it kind of frames it so then you rotate around that point. And let's grab the red point and kind of put it, we don't really know where it's going to be, but around that area should should be good. Oh, no, we want to probably move it a bit more forward. Okay, about here. Um, and then inside that, let's create a cube. And let's scale it down, kind of make it look as much like a rifle as we can even though it's it's definitely not a rifle <laughs> uh, alright and let's call it a rifle perfect and let's just duck into our game view I might just bring that on this side just so we can kind of uh, position it better um, you just might want to make this zero, zero and then just bring the gun forward so that this um, the actual position of this is at the back and let's bring it up kind of in that view you reckon that looks like a, a gun let's maybe create a cylinder uh, drag it that way let's drag it out this way let's just do a quick little bit of modeling let's rotate it that's not going to work because We've flattened it. Uh, you know what? Let's not even worry. Let's just let's just stick with the general rifle. Um, let's just duck into our materials. Let me just pop this back up here. We don't really need this. And let's create a new material. We're going to call this gun. Let's make it somewhat darker, like a metal. Let's bring up the metallic. Since it's a it's supposed to be a metallic gun, and drag that onto it. So. As you can guess, it kind of looks like a gun if you use your imagination and squint, I think. Alrighty, so we're going to... Oh, now if you press play, you'll see that since we've put it in that position, it's not really following the... It's more following the character than the, the player. But if we pop the rifle holder into the camera, you will notice now, wherever we look, we somewhat have this going but you notice oh no our character is not obeying what we're saying that's because the rifle has a box collider on it and that does not play nice with the character controller so now you notice we have full realm and we have a nice little rifle following where we're looking now you want some sort of reaction when you fire so let's just create a UI now we're gonna it's probably the first time you've seen this but this is a canvas so if we rename this muzzle flash canvas and we want to change it to world space and bring this position down to it make the scale like tiny because that's how big it is and now you see we have this canvas right here and we want to position it at the end of the barrel because that's where we want the muzzle flash to be alrighty and now we are going to bring in a UI image so this image will be the muzzle flash and we want to import a muzzle flash so let's go into into our muzzle flash and here we have our sprite selection so when you import a texture usually it comes in like this but since we want to use it in the actual UI you want to make it into a sprite and UI and then just click apply and voila it is now being changed over now this is probably quite small so we'll see how this plays so you go into the sprite select that and we just let's just rescale it into something that looks like a muzzle flash so now when you're playing, you will see bang, 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 
you'll see the, the flash happening. That is my sound of a gun. But now if you press play, it's not going to really look like a muzzle flash. It's kind of just going to going to be on screen. So how do we fix this? Well, through the magic of FSMs, let's create another one. We're going to call this one Muzzle Flash. And we're going to create an idle event. And we're going to create a new event. This is probably the first time we're doing this in the tutorial series. So we're going to say to fire. So wrong. We're going to delete that. We're going to say new transition to fire. We're going to create a new state and we're going to call this firing. We're going to make it a red color because it's dangerous. It doesn't really matter if it's red, but it kind of makes it look cooler. Alrighty, so if you have an idle event, we're going to get a get button down event. And see how it came up with fire? That would not normally happen. It's just because it's one of our first inputs. So if you go to our, your input, you'll see that you have preset all of these different um, buttons and you can increase the size and type more in if you want. So if you go to fire one, you'll see that the name is fire one, positive button is left control, or the alternate um, button is mouse zero, which is your left mouse button. And you've also, this is where we came in to invert the mouse before. And you've got X, Y, and then all of these ones at the bottom, they're usually for your controller. So you can set up your joysticks for your Xbox controller or your PlayStation controller or such. So that's where you can come and rename your um, buttons. You can, if, if just say if you want to create a new one, I'll show you now. We can create a crouch button. And you can just put C, because C is for crouch. Press crouch. And then once you hook it up in the system, it will work. So we can probably leave that because we'll probably do that later on. Alrighty, so let's go back to our muzzle flash canvas. We're going to get the button down. So when we press the left mouse button in, we're going to send the event to fire. So press the left mouse button in to fire and we'll fly down into the firing. So now let's go back to here. We're going to say activate game object. And we're not going to activate our one. We're going to change that to a specific game object. And that specific game object is the muzzle flash. Let's rename this just so we don't get confused. Muzzle flash. Alrighty, so that's renamed to muzzle flash. And when it's idle, it's not going to be on. So we're going to turn that on. Recursive means it will activate any children underneath it. So if, if we have that, it's going to activate this one and this one. But if we turn that off, it's just going to activate the rifle and not worry about the children, the poor children. Alrighty, so with that not active, let's come down to firing and we're going to now make it active and make another transition and call it finished. And you'll see in a second, we'll say get button up with fire button finished. So let me work this through. So we, when the game loads, nothing's pressed. You press the fire button, it transitions to the fire, to fire, comes down to firing. Until you release the button up, it will say finished, come back to idle. Now, of course, we're going to expand it so we can have ammo and so we can have a, the muzzle flash actually turning on and off. And I'll show you why this is important in a second. So turn off gizmos, so bang, bang, bang. Look how nice that looks. Nice and simple. Now that doesn't look very nice because the muzzle flash isn't really rotating at all. So what we can do is we'll create another one and we'll call this rotate muzzle flash. And we'll also create a finished event in case that happens. And we're gonna call this one to rotate. to rotate and to rotate. So is this kind of making sense? So we're basically reusing it. So no matter what state we're in, if we release the button, it's still gonna go back to idle. And that's important. You don't want it to kind of get stuck on a state and then it can't get back because that kind of crashes the system. So we're gonna make this orange. So it kind of makes it a bit better. So while it's rotating, we want one to be off and we're going to make this one wait 
weight is a very important one because that actually lets you specifically time it. So let's make that 0 0.03 and we're going to say to rotate. So if you don't release the button in that time frame of 0 0.03 seconds, we're going to fire another event to say rotate it now. So I'll show you what happens. So let's drop down another weight. We're going to make this 0 0.02 and to rotate again. So let me show you what happens now. So when we play, nothing is firing. So I'll even bring this up so you can kind of see what's happening. All right, so it's idle. I clicked the left mouse button in and look at that. Now we have a loop happening. I release, back to idle, mouse button down, we are firing again. So that's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. But now we want to take it one step further. Let's randomly rotate. So set random rotation of the muzzle flash. And we only want it to rotate on the Z axis, otherwise it would get lopsided. So you can work it out. So if you rotate Z, that's going to kind of look good, except it's not really it's not really centered. So let's let's make it like 0 0.45 maybe. No, it's not gonna it's not gonna cut the mustard. All right, maybe like 0 0 0.45. Is that gonna? No, still maybe maybe 0 0.47. That should be good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. All right. So you can just work with the, the pivots to kind of make it make it a bit better, function a bit better. All right, so come back to the muzzle flash, and we're gonna set the random rotation just to Z. So now when we play, you'll notice we're kind of getting a bit more of a sporadic muzzle flash. So we might have to scale um, the muzzle flash down a tiny bit, just so it kind of looks a little bit better. Uh, let's rotate that in and scale it up. All right, let's see how this looks. All right, now yeah, that looks quite quite nice. Doesn't look as as scripted. <laughs> it kind of looks a bit more sporadic. And we can even take it one little step further, which I'll, I I like to do. And we can come into here and create a light, and we'll create a point light. And let's bring this forward. We're gonna pump the intensity and let's create some sort of an orange an orange color and let's pump it up to about there, make the range a little bit a little bit bigger, about about there. Alright, that should be good. And we're gonna call this the muzzle flash light. Lovely. And then we're just going to pretty much do the same thing. Say activate game object, specify the muzzle flash light, and since the muzzle flash isn't on in this, this state, we're going to turn it off, copy it, paste it into here, and we're going to activate it here. So now when, you're, when you play, you'll notice that we have some light. You probably won't notice it. Let's just create another. Let's just create a sphere in front of us. And we'll just drop the gun one onto it so we can see it. So when we run up to it. And that actually, if you notice when we start, the lights off. It's actually on, sorry. So that that's, that's a problem. We need to have that turned off at the start. There we go. So now we have, but see also here's another problem that if you release it when that other state is on, so we released it in this state back to here, the light is still activated. So what we need to do is set another activate object on this one for the, the muzzle flash light. So let's just drop this back to here and make sure it's always off.
at the start when we're in idle. So now, no matter what, when we release it, it's always going to be turned back off. How good does that look? And so if you're in a dark corridor or something, you can um, illuminate that that corridor. So let's just do an example. So let's just quickly mock up a dark hallway. Drop that in, drop that in, and also rotate this guy. And drop that, and drop that, and then drop that. It kind of looks like a shanty town. Alrighty. And we're going to. Is that our directional light? Yeah, let's bring that up here just to get out of the way. Alrighty. So now when we're in a, in a dark room, you can see that we're not we're we're illuminating it, which kind of creates a bit more of a realistic simulation. And of course, with, when you have your cube, you can always chuck in your own um, gun model. And can you imagine how good that will look? You have that, and you can also spawn little um, shells to fire out at random rotations. So really, the possibilities are endless with creating weapons and stuff. You can have lights that turn on your gun. You can have little emissions that turn on particle systems. And of course, we're gonna we're gonna get to that later on in our tutorial series. But for today. I think we have done quite well. I mean, in our next tutorial, we're going to start our projection system for firing bullets and recasting damage onto a simple AI enemy, which will follow you around the map in a very devastating way. Not really, it's just going to kind of be like a zombie thing that's going to follow you. So that should be fun. Alrighty, guys, thanks for watching. If you liked what you have seen, how about you leave us a like or maybe even subscribe? And I will see you in the next video. This has been Kieran Hoversapien for Film Storm Studios. And I will see you then, guys. Thank you so much. Bye.